You might be wondering why I had blood on myself after the big half, so let's do a big half recap. So big half for me was a tune-up race, and so this was a really good way to check in and see where I was at for Chicago Marathon, which is now in five weeks time, less than five weeks time now that I'm recording this. The goal for all, almost over a year has been to get a sub 145 half. I've been chasing this for a while and I've not been able to hit it, and it was pretty important that if I wanted to Boston qualify in Chicago that I get this sub 145 at big half. So I went into this day prepared and ready. I feel like I've really nailed race day nutrition on the head. Night before was a pizza from Franco Manca. We know that that's one of our favorite go-to places for Gabriel and I, and it sits really well on our stomachs. So that was our go-to the night before. Morning of, we're doing a coffee, a banana, electrolytes, and a carb drink. I specifically went for the Morton 160 carb drink, and I kind of sip that slowly as I'm getting to the start line. And then once I'm done, I just put that bottle into my race day bag and then hand that off to the stewards. Then we get to the actual race event itself. I'm switching shoes, I'm putting on the Adios Pro 3s, and we start to do our warm ups, did a little bit of strides and stretching. And before you know it, we're getting into the race. I did want to use this chance to like try out my new shocks. I recently got the Open, I believe they're the, that they're called the Open Pro or the Open Run, but they're really great because you can still hear things around you. And that's something that I really want to do more at races is just have a headphone that's not necessarily blocking out everything around me, but allows me to also hear what's happening around me, hear the cheers obviously that also like push me forward and yeah, before we knew it, I was like in the start line, we are getting ready to go, and as we set off for that first kilometer, I found it really hard to sort of not speed up with everyone else, and it's that typical thing. Everyone shoots off from the start, and this has been something that I've told my coach, and I've said to my coach, I really want a nail in the butt. My coach's name is Sally, and she's known as Sensible Sally, and something that I've really wanted to do is become more sensible like Sally. And I wanted to really practice what she preaches in terms of starting out sensibly, not going out at a really fast pace. So I kept checking my watch, and I really had to mentally tell myself to pull myself back and sit more in that pace that that would help me contain that energy and contain that save it for the second half of the race and so that's exactly what I did and I'm very proud of that that's something that I've been really struggling to do and I always feel like I'm doing the opposite and then I'm struggling the entire second half and on a day like big half which is a very warm day I was very very happy that I saved that for the second half the second thing I was really proud of was that I was able to stomach two gels which for some reason during this marathon training block I've been really struggling to stomach any sort of nutrition which is obviously horrible for marathon training and so I was able to stomach two gels and I almost felt like I could have gone for a third but I really felt like I'm getting back into that routine of being able to just like take a gel rip the top off and just have it all in one go rather than having it like little by little over increments of like I don't know six miles um, and so I felt really good about getting that energy down I got a water at every single water station it was a very warm day and yeah I have I still kind of have the times written out on my hand because Sharpie is horrible to get off, off your hand but I just kept checking in even though the GPS was a bit off I just kept checking in to see what my average pace was like if I was hitting my times my coach gives me times for every three miles that I should be sitting at if I want to hit my goal race time and so I kept checking in and just making sure and but for the most part I think what was important to me was to run this race and to really more so focus on what half marathon pace feels like and go back to my training in my head to remember what that feels like and sort of use my watch as like more of something to check in rather than something that I rely on, especially with a big race like the big half where the GPS can throw your time off. And so you can't always rely on your watch, which I think is so important. And I think it was so much better to go off of feel and like be able to know exactly what that half marathon pace feels like and just be able to switch into it, which I think is such a strong mentality and just ability to have as a runner. So I felt really proud of that. And just really being able to push forth for that last sprint finish was just felt really strong, really good. And yeah, I didn't know that I was chafing the entire second half and I've yet to go through race day photos but I feel like if I can get my hands on them, I definitely want to see like exactly where in the race I started chafing. I will say that I did put anti-chafe like all over my body because this was the first race that I was running in just a sports bra, which was a pretty big moment for me because I've been struggling with my body confidence for years. And this was 
the race that I just said to myself, it's gonna be warm. If you wanna do a race in a sports bra, this is the race to do it. And I was really proud of myself for doing that. It's probably the most confident that I felt in a race. And I just loved that I was wearing like a cute purple sports bra with a matching purple biker short. But unfortunately with that, if you're going to sweat, if you're going to bleed, it's going to show. And I'm not so much self-conscious about sweat as I am blood. And there's this really funny clip that Gabriel took of me after I crossed the finish line and saw my final time that I was so excited and I ran towards him, but I just had blood like all down my left side of my chest. And looking back at it now, I was definitely embarrassed in the moment, but afterwards, like even Gabriel was saying, like it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like you've just finished what is like your goal half time. If not, like you absolutely crushed that time. And so in the end, I was proud of it. And I wanted to share that. And I'm honestly, I really push myself to be a very genuine and honest runner. If I'm going to po post stuff on social media, like I want to share that it's not just all PBs that, you know, sometimes you're on your period during a triathlon. Sometimes you are chafing hardcore during a half marathon. But in reality, like I think it's more important to focus on the fact that your body is so strong. It got you there. And, you know, throughout the entire race, you're able to push yourself to limits that you never knew you had and crush that new PB. So final time was 140.24, which I'm super proud of. And yeah, I, definitely a big confidence boost for Chicago Marathon. And we still have about five weeks to go. So still a lot of time to put in more work, more marathon training. And my coach and I are just really excited to see what I can do and what we can squeeze out of my training for the last five weeks before we get to the start line of Chicago Marathon 2023.